All your life, you've been told that you're an imposter just because you don't know regular expressions. But no matter what you do, your regular expressions never seem to match, even after you try adding a backslash before every single character. But I'm here to tell you today that it's not your fault. It's not your fault. In this video, I'm going to expand on something that I said about regular expressions in an earlier video. My overall goal is to raise awareness about the confusing mess of different regular expression implementations that exist out there. I think very few people are aware of just how many subtle differences there are in the flavors of regular expressions that you'll commonly encounter in command line tools. People will often say that it's the sign of a novice when someone blames their tools instead of just learning how to use them properly. However, as someone who has spent many hundreds of hours thoroughly learning all of these command line tools, I can say with confidence that basically no one actually takes the time to learn all of these different regular expression quirks. And in this video, I'm going to show you some examples to justify my claim. A good place to start the discussion would be with a video that I made several years ago about some unexpected behavior that I saw with grep. At the time, I was working on writing an article to discuss how regular expression quantifiers work. I was doing some tests on the command line to verify my understanding of quantifiers. Many of you will probably recognize that this regular expression matches an A character repeated three times. And as you can see, every instance of an A character repeated three times is listed in the output. In addition, you might also recognize that the question mark character makes this quantifier lazy. And in this similar command, the plus character makes the quantifier possessive. However, the output that I see here is not what I expected. Since I know that the dash E flag uses extended regular expressions, I decided to also try it out with Perl compatible regular expressions, which gives the following result. This prompted me to eventually start investigating the specification to figure out what was going on. And the conclusion that I came to was that the behavior with the dash E flag was undefined behavior. In fact, it turns out that POSIX based regular expressions don't support non greedy repetition operators at all. That's a problem because it means that if you do try to write a non-greedy regular expression quantifier, you'll just end up with silently undefined behavior according to the specification. So it's clear that there's undefined behavior in the specification, so is there more? So checking with control F, it also says the interpretation of an ordinary character preceded by an unescaped backslash is undefined, except for these cases. So I think that's also an interesting case. Usually the way this is handled, when you escape something that doesn't need to be escaped, is to just interpret it as the original character. And when you don't know the escaping rules, I think it's quite common to just try escaping stuff until it works. So this is probably also another common source of undefined behavior. In an ideal world, these commands would produce warnings so that you can at least have an opportunity to change the regex. As you can see, most of the time the undefined behavior does the right thing, but trying to rely on that is a dangerous game. So now that we've established that POSIX regular expressions don't support non-greedy quantifiers, let's see what other features they lack. You might be surprised to learn that BRE regular expressions don't even support alternation. This is interesting because BRE is the default mode for grep, and it's important not to confuse BRE with ERE, which does support alternation. In general, BRE supports less features than ERE, and by default it requires some extra escaping for special characters, which is not the case for ERE. So now that we know how crippled ERE and BRE regular expressions are, the important question is which flavor do our tools actually use? According to the man page for GNU grep, the default is BRE. However, this version of grep also supports ERE as well as Perl compatible regular expressions. Now let's see what the documentation says for SED. According to this, the default is BRE. However, SED also supports ERE. However, it currently doesn't appear to support Perl compatible regular expressions. The man page for SED also includes this gem. POSIX2 BREs should be supported, but they aren't completely because of performance problems. That's reassuring, especially since BRE is the default. Now, what about GNU awk? The man page doesn't say anything about BRE or ERE. It turns out that there's a POSIX specification specifically for awk. And to make things more interesting, the specification specifically references ERE regular expressions. However, it then goes on to specify a list of exceptions specifically for awk. This is just a few tools, but of course many command line tools use regular expressions. So if you wanted to actually master regular expressions, you'd need to memorize every feature that every tool supports. And if you start digging into the source code, you'll find that a lot of these differences have been formalized as a feature that can be switched on or off with a bit mask. And here's a few examples. So we've got an aux syntax, a POSIX aux syntax, a grep syntax, egrep, POSIX egrep, and a few more. So if you truly want to master regular expressions, you have to memorize all of these. And it gets even more fun than that. If you go digging around in the source code for core utils, you'll find tons of references to those bit masks. And here you can see a few other commands that use regular expressions. 
So, it's worth stepping back a bit and asking how could the situation be improved. I think at minimum, it would be great if the GNU tools supported a flag that would turn on warnings when invoking undefined behavior in a regular expression. I think it would also be great if other GNU tools, like SED or awk, also had a flag that turned on Perl-compatible regular expressions. In my opinion, and I think the opinion of many others, Perl-compatible regular expressions are far superior to BRE or ERE. Now, BRE and ERE still need to be supported. Any kind of official government or corporate technology stack will want to stick with the original historical standards rather than the most elegant solution. For these systems, consistency and stability is far more important than efficiency or elegance. For any kind of new tools, I think that Perl-compatible regular expressions should be the default. I also don't think there's any need to invent a new canonical flavor of regular expressions. It would be best if we could just pick a well-defined subset of Perl-compatible regular expressions and cross-compile everything to that. If you compare how alternation works in PCRE versus POSIX, there are a few incompatible differences but maybe you could implement something like a simple switch to the regular expression engine? There's a lot more that I could say on this topic, but I think that regular expressions have a tragically unrealized potential. But if you're interested in learning more, you can read my blog post on my regular expression visualizer tool. This page talks about how you can effectively compile any regular expression down to a handful of operations, almost like a tiny set of assembly instructions. There are some even deeper connections that you can make between regular expressions and computation in general. You could even think about a regular expression matcher as though it were some kind of abstract computation machine without any branching or loop instructions. Each atomic item in the regular expression would just map to an individual assembly instruction. I could say a lot more about this topic, but I'll have to save that for another video.